Just drop the damn bottle. Hello, Rufus. I hear you got real smart since we saw you last. Funny I didn't hear the same thing about you. There's a uh, good old time we had back at your place. One. <laughs> Depends on which side of the good old time you were on. Reason I didn't recognize you right off. I didn't know you with your clothes on. <laughs> Emmett and me's real sore about what you did to Frank. He was our brother, you know. And brothers don't grow on no goddamn trees, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do now. You and me and Emmett are gonna have a little party for old time's sake. And then we're gonna separate your head from the rest of you. Come on, move your ass. I said move your ass! Hello, folks. Welcome to the City Beef Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Gary Hill. Suzanne is out sick tonight. Uh, uh, some some unknown, unknown disease or something. Uh, too, too much sun, I guess, uh, where she was. But um, <laughs> with me as usual, and I love her so much, Iris is here. How you doing? I am doing very well. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm here. It's, it's it's a Wednesday night, you know. Um, I'm getting all excited for the weekend. Uh, if, if you didn't know, there. Because I've been whoring it out enough, and I, that's my fault, really. Uh, Fleas and Flicks charity auction is happening the, this this Saturday. We're recording this on Wednesday. Hopefully, this is out on Friday for you guys to hear this 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 information. Um, I'm excited about that. They, all the money goes to the Humane Society, and there's some great horror and wrestling items in the mix there for you guys to bid on. I know a couple of my friends are already talking about what they want and what they're willing to fight for. So uh, I. I I don't want a bloodbath on my hands, but, you know, there's some pretty dope items in there, i I, I got to say, this time around. Um, yeah, so that's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm all excited about that, and life, and s- spring is coming, so not that we got a lot of snow to begin with. Um, if you guys are in the upper elevations of California, be, be safe, please, because yes. I've seen that awful snow you guys got, and I, I, I don't want to say you guys can keep it. I, I just don't want it. It's just, it's terrible. Yeah. You know. Ah. Uh, but yeah, we're here tonight to discuss some films, and like we always do, I ask Iris first, what you been watching, girl? Okay, so <laughs> I've been watching a lot of uh, just weird, weird documentaries. Uh, sometimes I get on this kick while I'm working, you know, just to have some, because I can pretend it's a podcast, you know, because you really don't have to pay attention to documentaries because it's a lot of storytelling. Uh, So there was one where I can't remember what the name of it was. I think it was uh, Horror in the High Desert, and it was about a guy who disappears while he's hiking. And I thought it was a legit, you know, something legit to listen to, and I was getting really into it. And then, oh, my God, then they start the conspiracy of UFOs and aliens and all this. I'm like, oh, my God, turned it off. (laughs) I was so upset. Uh, but uh, besides that, um, I've been watching uh, Narcos, uh, but the Mexican, uh, Mexico, and um, a l- great cast in that. Really good cast. Um, Michael Pena is in it, and I really, really like him. Uh, he plays one of the main characters of, you know, I'm just in season one, so I've been doing a lot of that. And then just watching crap TV like... Uh, Love never lies and all this other bullshit. So yeah, that's basically me. <laughs> My sister's like you. She listens to a lot of true crime pro- crime podcasts now. She's into that whole investigation, discovery, and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. so you guys watch the same shit, yeah. You know, and, that, and that's fine. Okay. She Tell listen- her to watch that one if she wants to, you know, kind of detach herself from reality because it, it it seems like it's really. I thought it was a real documentary, and it's basically a mock. But, you know, whatever. She, she was listening to one, though. It's called, like, Sliced Mango or some shit. It's hosted by this Asian Ooh. girl. Her name is, like, Sus- her name, Su- Su- Susanna Sue or Susan something, something something goofy like that. And I think Sue is her last name, so I can't call her goofy. Probably S-U. Unless she, like, changed her name. Because the girl sounds so white, but she's Asian. It's not even funny. And that's not even the problem I have with it. It's why when I listen to it, and she's trying to be serious about a subject... She sounds like 
her voice is like condescending. Like, can you believe that? Like, no, bitch, it happens all the time. And then she, <laughs> and then, and then she, she, she does this thing where she. I, I I hate to call myself a grammar Nazi in my old age, but I'm a grammar Nazi in my old age. So I hear a grown woman uh, on a true crime podcast. You the word diarrhea, diarrheaing. I can't even say the word. You know, <laughs> I, I, I want to turn it off. I'm like, why are you still listening to this fucking bitch for? It? Like, she had over 200 episodes. I was like, what, don't make it good, though? Come on now. There's got to be other ones, you know. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So I, I don't recommend the Slice Mango Show or whatever that show is called. It, 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 it's, not a, it's not great because, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a grammar Nazi, apparently. And I, I can't stand listening to morons talk about true crime. And one of the things I hate the most is she listens to one or two of them where... Like, they'll make a joke about the deceased, like, for no reason. And I'm like, it's, it's not, not the time of the place, guy. You know, these are real people, real families. And, you know, it's, it's, it's I don't, I don't like that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's interesting that there's, there are some podcasts that are very tongue in cheek about, um, um, true crime. There's an Australian one, uh, uh, Australian one that I enjoy listening to because they are funny, but, yet they're still kind of respectful. Um, it's called Bloody Murder, and they're funny as fuck. Um, but it's kind of like more gallows humor instead of making fun of, you know? Because Now, if somebody, uh, somebody died in a hilarious way, I, I'd laugh at that, but, you know, I, I, feel, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I feel bad for them at the same time. Yeah, what's neat about these is, like, it's all Australian murder, uh, you know, true crime. So it's a lot, a lot of stuff that we the u.s don't know about so it's kind of fun to listen to because uh, i'm listening to about new stuff not the same old shit rehashed over and over and over again i'm waiting so. for i'm waiting for the story to pop up there now a guy who a guy who collects drop bears and keeps them in cages that doesn't feed the eucalyptus and just six them on people because they're fucking crazy you know it's just uh, <laughs> call, call me crazy but you know this this cocaine bear thing and now there's um Oh, what is there? Is cocaine shark? <laughs> there's a cocaine shark, there's a meth gator, and I seen one today, crack coon. So a, a, a raccoon that's on crack apparently is going to oh be a thing. Oh my god! With these things happening, I, I kind of oh want to watch the Killer Drop Bear movie because. Oh, those, you know it's going to come out. Those fucking things are psychotic. I hear if you know, they don't get the right foods, yeah, you know, they just drop on tourists and attack them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you know what is funny? They actually had a podcast episode about koalas killing people. Pied Piper of, of koala bears, <laughs> you know, just controlling them with his mind. Oh I, my god! See, these are better films. People, we're just writing them for you. Mm -hmm. You just gotta execute them. <laughs> exactly. Just just have somebody hand you money and just go do it. So I'll man. watch it. <laughs> stuff I've watched recently, it's been older stuff and good stuff. I mean, you go, I go on Tubi and look for stuff sometimes, and oh, yeah. and let me tell you something about Tubi. It's 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 got it's ad supported, it's free, but their recommendations after stuff you watched on there that they give you are, are way more on point than Netflix is. Because I watched something and they recommended I watched The Gladiator. Now, this is a film, it's not the boxing film, and it's not the Russell Crowe film. This is a film directed by Abel, Abel Ferrara, which is a TV movie that uh, New World Pictures got into the game of making TV movies. Mm -hmm. um, this stars Ken Wall, who was in the TV show Wise Guy, and he was in The Wanderers, and he was, um, biggest action thing he was in was The Taking of Beverly Hills. And oh, okay. um, it's like a real minor action star, but he was in a ton of stuff over the years. He plays a mechanic whose brother is, is, is killed by this psycho motorist who's driving a black Dodge Charger. He's, he's just killing folks all over town in this car. And mm -hmm. he soups up his truck with, like, a, a spear hook and some other, like, some bumper shit to stop drunk drivers while he's looking for this black Charger. And <laughs> it, 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 it sounds kind of tame for, for an Abel Ferrara film, and it really is, because it's made for TV. You can only do so much with the budget that you have. But it has great supporting actors in it. Um, Stan Shaw is, is one of my favorite people in films, and he's in this film as his his junkyard buddy that hawks parts for him for this truck, and it's um it's very impressive as as far as that goes. It's it's not really great of quality, but as far as like picture goes, but it is on Tubi. Um, 
You should check it out. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun in, in a very 80s... Oh, I'll have to check it out. You know, like makeshift, you know, because this is like the time of the 18 where they're just building, you know, battle tanks out of flatbed trucks. So <laughs> it, it kind of feels like that. Like this guy, this guy, and the guy in the movie is supposed to be a mechanic, so it's kind of like believable. Like it didn't feel like it was forced, him being able, mm-hmm. being able to build shit. But um, yeah, the, the Gladiator was a good time. It's on, it's on Tubi, like I say, go check it out. Uh, speaking of Tubi, and I can, uh, I'll have this discussion with you because I can never figure this out. Uh, Gary Daniels, who is pretty much Australia's answer to, to what a, a martial artist should be. Yeah. Um, I can never figure out why he, he wasn't the biggest star as like a John claude Van Damme or something. It just, um, it kind of drives me nuts a little bit because he's, he's just as good as him. I watched a film with him and there's, there's a lot of them. I mean, he, he made a lot of PM entertainment stuff and stuff like that. And, um, that's a cat making noise, guys. And I apologize. You don't apologize, do you, do you Duchess? No, you, no, you don't. But um, this one I watched because it's called White Tiger, and it's it's got a, it's got probably got the shortest hair of a Gary Daniels movie of, of all time because he has really long hair and stuff. Um, plot synopsis is after a Chinese drug lord murders his partner because this always happens. A tough DEA, DEA agent teams up with a mysterious beauty uh, played by Julia Nixon, who's been in tons of stuff, an Asian actress, and makes an uneasy alliance to exact. Um, Basically, he's sabotaging um, the bad, main bad guy, uh, played by Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa, who most people know as Shang Tsung from the first Mortal yeah. Kombat film. But he's he's was the Asian heavy in tons of these fucking movies. And well, yeah, yeah. If you throw a stone, you'll find him and Al Leong and Gerald Nakamura. You, you'll you'll find all these guys in these movies. They, they they were acting a lot back in these days, and. Gary, he, he wants to, like, sell some super crack to the Japanese, but his Japanese bosses aren't having it. So, so he um, basically beds a lot of women in these movies, and um, uh, Gary Daniels is after his whole operation because he killed his partner, and it's it's it, he does a lot of martial arts and gunplay, and it, it's, it's just a lot of fun. But I can never figure out why Gary Daniels wasn't a, a bigger star. I mean, he's still doing stuff to this day, and... If you follow him on social media, he's still he's still very fit as far as uh, an athlete goes. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Oh my gosh. But you know why though? Here, here's a good reason though. Good. It really depends on the studio you're working with and PR. You know, it's it's your your um, your publicist, your you know the guy that's gonna get you out there and stuff. Because he was probably like, well, I'm not gonna get you know big big roles because those are being filled by, you know, Van Damme and Chuck Norris and, you know, uh, what was the other one? Dolph Lundgren and things like that. But he had a steady paycheck making, um, you know, these B movies basically is what they are. And he did a lot of stuff in, um, in Hong Kong. He did a lot of Hong Kong movies. So, Oh, he's I got, mean, you know, his he, name. He's, he's got cred, for sure. I mean, you, you can see it. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just read somewhere on he's here. He's got a lot that, of street cred. That, that he uh, choreographed to all of his own stuff in this movie, and it's, it, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, um, luck of the draw, really, which is which is sad because I have seen a lot of his movies, you know, and I I really like him. You know, I remember seeing a lot of his movies when I was a kid in the, in the drive-in. Like Delta Force One and things like that, you know, best of the best, things like that. So yeah, I think it's probably just a uh, roll of the dice. I don't want to be that guy, but Eric Roberts wasn't best of the best, honey. You know, <laughs> <laughs> do the best you can, be the best of the best. So good, man. You know, you will believe that a one-armed Eric Roberts could do a flying jump kick and kick a guy in the face in that movie. You know, it's, it's uh, beautiful. Beautiful stuff, almost <laughs> as beautiful that almost as beautiful as that ponytail is. Come on now, you know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, yeah, Mandalorian is a thing that's out now. The new season, I watched the first one. The the new I one. Just watched the first two. Yeah, the new the new <laughs> one came out today. I didn't get to watch it yet though. Just, um, oh, I know what I'm gonna be watching tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's been decent so far, you know. Yeah, I really really like it, and then you know I 
I enjoy that uh, Grogu is actually coming into his own as a character also and not just the cute little puppet. So... What you what, what yeah. you you got Amy, you got Amy Sedaris in the first episode and and Katie Sackhoff so I, I was in my happy mode. Cause well, there is that too. <laughs> I've always loved Amy Sedaris so much though. She, she's you know, Strangers with a Candy. If you haven't watched the show, go, go back and watch that show, and you, you'll find out why I love Amy Sedaris so much. You know? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, you know the Oscars happened this past weekend, and. Uh, Made me oh so happy that uh, a movie that I just watched recently uh, won all them awards. H- have you watched everything, uh, everywhere, all at once yet, Air uh, Iris, or no? No, not yet. Um, I went to sit down with Lynn to watch it because she was kind of uh, showing some interest in it. I was like, okay, uh, we'll sit and watch it together. It's it's hard to explain as a narrative because it, it's, it's 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 it really plays on you know the structure of the family. And you know, accepting family the way they are, but it's it's all set in this bizarre, you know, fantasy world that's that's created by Michelle Yeoh, it, it, mm-hmm. and um, she's all inside of her head in this movie. So you get a lot of wacky shit going on. Nice. If you, if you didn't guess, she she's great in anything. So I, I don't need to tell you mm-hmm. guys that. Um, I think one of them Criterion uh, Channel, if you guys get that, has a bunch of her. Her good shit playing on it right now, Magnificent Warriors, the Heroic Trio, you know, stuff that, stuff that you need to be watching that, that, that before you watch this movie probably because um, she, she was a great actress before this came out. I'm just going to throw it out to people that didn't know that. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this isn't a Cinderella thing. This girl has put in her time. But I, I've watched the. I, I never watched the Oscars pull on. I, I, I can't watch. See, Jimmy Kimmel works on one level, one level for me, and that's sleazy. And he can't do sleazy anymore because he's an ABC guy. And I, I just can't do Jimmy Kimmel anymore. So I couldn't sit there and watch the whole thing. But I, I watched um, the acceptance speeches, and I, I've met Ki Hui Kwan and, and and Jamie Lee, and I can tell you both of them are, are extremely grateful for for the fandom they helped create and. I'll say this all day long. It could have happened to two better people uh, getting those awards. And yep. I, I don't remember Brendan Fraser, and I have not watched The Whale yet because, t- to be honest, I'm sure it's a great film. But uh, I'm not ready for that kind of depression yet. I, 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 it, it seems really heavy, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to take some time to, to myself to just sit and watch that w- w- when I'm ready to, you know. Um, but, yeah, that, it, uh, it's, it, that movie's wonderful, and... If 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 I, I, Willis said he watched it, and I was I was waiting for the, for the Willis to come out of that movie to to say, what is this stupid shit I just watched? And I'm like, no, even Willis liked it. So, you know, if Willis liked it, Mikey likes it. It's 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 all good. If you haven't seen it yet, I, I can't wait for your, your to hear about your reaction to it. Uh, it was, um, it's it's on. Oh, yeah. It's on our video service, ma'am. Hey, whenever you're ready to watch it, you know. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I think. Um... One of my, one of the things that I stream also has it. So yeah, we're gonna definitely be watching that. Um, yeah. Besides that, um, not much else to, to, to speak of. But um, we're here tonight to, to to celebrate two great actresses who left us recently. Uh, but both both bombshells into their own rights. Uh, Raquel Welch and, and Stella Stevens. Um, done many things over the years. You may know Raquel Welch from um. What's what's the Cave Girl movie? Is it One Million Years B.C.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you'll know from that. We're, we're, we're not much of anything, and t- tons <laughs> of us. That, that's the one that sticks out to people, though, and, and, and it should, because she, she's not wearing much. But we're going to talk about a film that I, I, I think is pretty... I, I It was a it was a first-time watch, and it's getting a multiple-time watch for me, because I, I think it's pretty awesome. H- Hanny Calder from 1971. It's a... It's a surprise um, revenge film. We'll get into that. Because uh, if you look at the poster, the guys that she whizzies with on the, on the poster, uh, one of them is a good right. guy. The other two guys are just kind of hanging out, but they're they're not good guys in this movie. You know? Mm-hmm. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, speaking of sleaze, uh, Stella Stevens uh, got into the exploitation game uh, later on in her career. We're going to talk about Chained Heat from 1983. But you may know her as working with Dean Martin quite a bit back in the day, and she was in the Poseidon Adventure, and she, she's in she's in a bunch of good stuff. But uh, we're gonna talk about Chained Heat because 
it is possibly, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this now, one of the greatest exploitation casts ever assembled. And um, Oh, yeah. Including Linda Blair with a she-mullet, you know. Come on now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do this in um, a chronological order and start with Handy Call, their first, right after this trailer. The Clemens Brothers, crude, brutal, savage. Look what we got for supper. This is Hanny Calder, a woman alone in a man's world, hell bent on revenge. Me and my horses need water. Annie Calder, cool, calculating. God, that guy's built. Thomas Luther Price, bounty hunter. A strange and lethal partnership that deals in death. Thank you, Sheriff. Anytime. Anytime at all. You went the sheriff. I'd call one. Your bottom's wet. So is your chin. Damn, who's down there, Custer? Let me get him. The reason I take such pains with the outside of a gun is because I've always thought death very unattractive. Hanny Calder. A big bonanza of a western. With an internationally famous all-star cast. Raquel Welsh is Hanny Calder. Bounty hunter Robert Culp. Academy Award winner Ernest Borgnine. Jack Elam. Strother Martin. Christopher Lee. Diana Doors. Looks like your sign fell down. <laughs> Riding towards a rendezvous with death, the beautiful Avenger and her ruthless adversaries. An explosive vendetta that can only be settled by the gun. Get up. The time had come. Hanny Calder was ready for the kill. Strap it on. Can I put my pants on? You're not going to need them for long. Good old time we had back at your place. Depends on which side of the good old time you were on. Reason I didn't recognize you right off. I didn't know you with your clothes on. <laughs> they weren't bothering nobody. They were just riding around being wounded. You were shooting the hell out of the place. You're a hard woman, Henny Calder. Where the hell is she? God damn it, where is she? A rip-roaring western adventure, packed brimful of action, excitement, and drama with a beautiful Hellraiser called Hanny Calder. Hanny Calder from 1971. Um, your cheap applause synopsis is this. After she is raped and her husband murdered, a woman hires a bounty hunter to instruct her in the use of a gun so she can get her revenge on the three outlaws responsible. This stars, of course, come on, stupid screen, uh, Raquel Welch as Handy Calder, uh, the great Robert Culp as Thomas Luther Pr Price, Ernest Borgnine as Emma Clemens, uh, Jack Elam as, as Frank Clemens, ba -ba 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 -ba, the great Strother Martin, as, and these are all great actors, as uh, Rufus Clemens, Christopher Lee as Bailey, Diana Doris as Madam, uh, who else we got in here? There, 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 there's more. Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd. Y yeah. This directed by Burt Kennedy. I gotta see what he gave us here as far as films goes. He gave us love, apparently. A lot of stuff with with, with um with um. <laughs> he gave us Suburban Commando from 1991. So the first thing I ever seen this guy do is Suburban Commando. So the, the, there's that with, with Hulk Hogan and Christopher Lloyd. And another bounty hunter film to boot. See, uh, he directed six episodes of of the TV show Combat, which I love. Um, he also did 
Return of the Seven, which was the first Magnificent Seven um, sequel. He did The War Wagon with um, Great the Great John Wayne. Uh, support Your Local Sheriff, uh, The Devil's Backbone, Support Your Local Gunfighter, a uh, sequel to that. Uh, the Train Robbers, another, um, another, another John Wayne movie. I watched a lot of those John Wayne films with my dad, so I, I know most of those movies. Uh, like, like the back of my hand. Directed the film we covered a little while ago, starting with starring Rod Steiger called Wolf Lake, which was which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, some some TV shit too in there too, including Simon and Simon. Um, I, I will kick it to you, Iris, first. I, I really dug this. I can't wait to hear your opinion on it. Handy Calder, uh, give us your opinions, girl, and all that good stuff. Okay, so first of all, you've got eye candy on both sides, right? You've got Raquel, you've got Stephen Boyd, you, and you know, some people think of Robert Cole is, you know, good looking, and uh, the venerable Christopher Lee. Um, and these are people that I would have never thought that would be gathered to present such an interesting Western, especially with Ernest Borgnine. Um, you know, Jack Elam, you, you expect him in these because, you know, he's kind of like typecasted character of the, um, that prospector, right? That dirty, nasty cowboy that lives out there forever, the hermit. Um, but I, I enjoyed the storyline. I mean, it's, it's tried and true, right? It's, um, the girl gets raped and then she goes and takes revenge. I mean, you know, that's basically it. Um, the way that it all kind of pans out though, I like how at first she did not trust, um, Thomas or, you know, uh, Robert Culp's character. (laughs) She knocks him the fuck out which I thought was pretty, pretty brave, but you know, he got back at her, slapped her across the face for doing it. But, um, I like the, it wasn't a stereo stereotypical Western where she's the damsel in distress and he's going to come in as the bounty hunter and take care of things for her. He basically just gives her the, the tools to be able to do this herself. And I like what he tells her. It's like, whether you do this or not, you're not going to win. Even if you think you're winning, you're not going to win because it's, you know, she has to carry that debt of death with her. And I really enjoyed the fact that um, it looks like she's going to become the next bounty hunter. And she picked up some of his little quirks, like paying for the funeral of the guys that he brings in, (laughs) which I thought was kind of cool. But I really did enjoy this movie. I loved uh, the scenery was uh, a character in itself. It was just beautiful. Um, you get a little bit of uh, kind of like uh, <laughs> I thought of the Karate Kid when she had to work with The Rock, you know, bringing it up and down. <laughs> yeah, build, build it a strength up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and stuff like that. So it, it wasn't kind of it wasn't the the fantasy of like here's a gun. Oh, she's natural. <laughs> it's like no, because the first time she was supposed to shoot a guy, she kind of. She hesitated. She kind of froze. But uh, something happens in the story, uh, in the progression of the story, where she has to become her own woman, and she's pissed. And you can tell that she's pissed. And uh, she does get a little help in the end by the mysterious man in the black hat, as always. Every Western has to have that mysterious man in the black hat. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice little romp. It was a nice little Western, uh, revenge, uh, shoot 'em ups. It was just perfect. Um, so yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. And this was a first time watch for me too. I had no idea that, I mean, I knew that she had some Westerns like, um, Bandolero and things like that, but, um, I did not know that this was there and I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I dug this again too. I know you guys are thinking we're digging into westerns again, and then, uh, I don't care. You know, it's it's here. And it was great, and I, I'll tell you why I thought it was so great. And a lot of stuff I ever said what was rain, rains true, but this is probably there's there's probably hundreds of them out there. My favorite rape revenge film that, that there is, 
And, and I'll tell you why. Because you watch a lot of these. They're, they're kind of cheaply made. They really play on the sleaze. This one, you, you see, you know, the, them ravaging her in the bed. And, you know, but you don't, it doesn't really go in there. You get a little bit of the, of the trauma going in there. Mm-hmm. She turns her on pretty quick, you know, when, when she meets her, uh, her her benefactor or her her, uh, her 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 trainer, if you will, in, in Thomas Luther Price, and I, I love the, that this uh, the idea of him is taking her under under his wing, in, in a way to where my favorite parts of the movie uh, is when they go to Mexico and yeah. that they go to, to to meet to meet his friend who's who's the gunsmith, and this to me. Does Kill Bill better in less than an hour and a half than Kill Bill did? I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it's a much simpler idea, but it's almost the same idea. I'm, I'm pretty sure QT saw this movie, too. You know, and mix it in with, with you know, the, the Asian influence that he did. But I, I love the idea of him going to Mexico and taking a chance on this woman to, to the point to where th- this, this, this guy, I, I think his name was... Is his name Omar? I forget his name now. His friend, but he um, is going to build her a gun from scratch, you know. So that's yeah. so that's her gun, and and the whole idea of them, her not being able to fire the gun, they didn't play it like like you said. She's not a damsel in distress. She she knows she knows what she wants and who she has to find, and and this guy is the key to helping her find these guys because he's a professional manhunter. And the thing with the rock was, was cool because. It's it's almost like she's determined to get stronger so she can so she could be stronger as a person and, and to fire this forty five caliber gun, which would have knocked her on her, her little ass. Yeah, otherwise, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> exactly. So it made it more believable, you know, in the end where unfortunately, you know, spoilers, our, our bounty hunter dies and she she's left on her own to to um to get her three attackers, which are brilliantly really, Brilliantly played by these men, you know, Ernest Borgnine, Jack Elam, and of course Strother Martin. If you want to see some sleazy Strother Martin, you can you can watch this movie. He's he's pretty slimy. I mean, you can you can scrape it off with with a stick or something. How much slime is there, man? It's just um, <laughs> it's gross. Um, but the fact that she she goes to town and she's she's competent, and she's gonna she's gonna find her men. She's asking about them where they are, and yeah, you know, she 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 she, she uh, spoilers. She she does get her men in the end, and um, it's it's pretty great. I love I love the way it all plays out. I mean I, I don't want to go too far into this, but if if you could find this film, you, you hear us talking about it, our, our love for the film, um, please please watch it. It's it's it's, it's wonderful. The, the settings like like I said, they play a play role in themselves, and the music is great. It's got a great spaghetti you know theme music to it, and I don't want to say this was a um, a British and somebody else co-production. I have to, I have to look into this now. It's, it's uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's, it just was a British, uh, oh, British-Spanish co-production. So, th- th- there's that. And quick, uh... <laughs> in a seven-decade career, this is Chris Lee's only Western, which surprised the hell out of me, because he's the guy that made a whole, a whole bunch, a whole mess of films. And, um... He only won Western, which is which is appalling to me, because he has such a presence on screen, and I think, uh, you know, the idea of of him being more Westerns would would be would be awesome. And uh, sorry about that, right there. Um, oh, here it is, right here. QT said that it, said this movie was one of his inspirations for Kill Bill Volume One and Volume Two. Oh, there you go. Why I love Handy Calder so much is Robert Culp. He said. He is so magnificent in that movie. I, I actually think there's a bit of a similarity between Sonny Chiba and Uma Thurman and Kill Bill and Raquel Welch and Robert, Robert Culp and Handy Calder. And uh, I didn't read this before watching this movie, but I saw I saw a lot of the beats. And like I said, it's done... Oh, sorry about that. It's done in a way that's much more efficient than Kill Bill, in my opinion. There's not, there's not a lot of meat there to where she's hunting down these things, and I, and I know Kill, Kill Bill's uh, structure to where, uh, you know, she, she's hunting down each person one at a time, and it, that, each thing tells a story, but this this is much more compact in that sense, and I think it's a much more efficient as a film. It's um pretty, pretty freaking great, man. Oh my gosh. This, uh, 
in, in September 1972, Paramount Pictures was widely just distributed this movie on a double bill with a legend of um, N-Word Charlie, okay? That was a film starring Fred Williamson. Um, we did another one called Bossa N-Word on this show. and Yes, yes. Both of those films are pretty good. Just have unfortunate names, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Do, 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 yeah, not a whole lot more to mention right now. It's just, um, yeah. Well, here we go. Bailey makes Henley, H- Hanny an English uh, t- Tranter self-cocking revolver. revolver. It was invented by William Tranter uh, in 1856. As mentioned, the first model had two triggers. The lower one to turn the cylinder and, and, and to cock the hammer, and the other one to fire the weapon. The one in the film appears to be a cap and ball model, 554 bore, .442 caliber, so it packed quite a wallop. The second version of this pistol had a single trigger like most double ash revolvers since. And he mentions, you know, how much powder he puts in, in, in the barrel. So the idea that it's being a cap and ball a gun um, it is pretty much well established in the movie. At this. Yeah. But I, I, I dig it, man. It, this is, again, it's, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. And I think it, it historically it stuck, it, it stayed true. Um uh, so he was a weapons maker for the Confederates. So there was, you know, th- those were powder, um, they were powdered rifles. So you would stick your your bullet and then powder and you would stuff it all the way down there. And then you would put a little primer on your trigger, on your hammer, and bang. And then you would do it all over again. <laughs> That's why it was such a long war because it was slow, slow. But anyway, yeah. So I, I yeah, that's one of the um, one of the few things of this movie is the attention to detail, like little things like that, that really, really captured my attention. Yeah, I mean, I I, I got much else to say about this film except for say, say watch it. Um, I was saying, else you want to say about the film, or would you give it one to ten? Uh, I'm going to give this uh, an 8.5. I really enjoyed it. It kept my interest. Um, I liked the little attention to detail, as I was saying. And, um, you know, it wasn't the typical damsel in distress uh, where the guy has to be the knight in shiny armor. She was her own Joan of Arc, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Great first time watch. Highly recommended. I couldn't tell you where to find it except like on like an Amazon rental. I got it by more nefarious means, but um, it, it is what it is. Um, it's available on Prime to watch if you, if you rent or, or, or uh, buy it. And there might be a Blu-ray somewhere, too. I'm going to look right now and tell you. Uh, it's available for rental, eighteen ninety nine for a DVD. Um, if you want the Olive Signature Blu-ray, it's nineteen ninety five. Oh, and another $20 Blu-ray, too. I don't know how, I don't know how good it looks, though, but uh, extras-wise, but... This is one that I, I think would be a future contender for, like, Criterion release. I, I, I have a good time with it, and the actors are, are um, wonderful in it. If you look at the poster for this, though, it just, just uh, looks like two of her rapists just hanging out with her, with her and Robert Culp, and it's just like, yeah, that's not, that's not cool, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like a, like a pornography film, like, in the Old West. I'm like, that's not, that's not mm-hmm. right. Um, but, um... Ignore that. Ignore that poster. And uh, watch Andy Calder. <laughs> it's wonderful. Right? Um, but then again, back then, you really couldn't... Um, you would end up... The movie would have ended up at the Grindhouse Theaters instead uh-huh. of, you know, main theaters if even a hint of the rape was on there. Yeah. But, Greg, I, th- I think I think I read it. 8.5. I'm, I'm with you on that one. It's, it's, it's damn near perfect. I, I, I would write... It's great. Um... Next up, though, we're going to talk about some 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 beautiful women doing some nefarious things with, with uh, <laughs> nefarious men, nefarious women. We're going to discuss Paul Nicholas's Chained Heat from 1983. We'll do that right at the trailer. There's been far too many deaths in this prison. Well, maybe you could tell me how to accommodate 2,000 inmates in a prison that was built for 1,500. In this prison, rules and new inmates are meant to be broken. Prison virgin. Well, after the shot rubs off, you'll get pictures. And here, it's not a matter of what you know. It's who 
Huyen. Terrible things happen here. Terrible things. Can't you do anything to stop it? I'm trying. I'm trying, but it's very difficult. The crimes these women committed that got them into this prison are nothing compared to the crimes they'll commit to get out. Everybody clear this corridor, I call security. The game that Taylor sets up for all the inmates. Please, Miss Miller, don't put me in here. I'll take care of it. She likes to pit blacks against whites. <laughs> don't get caught up in the game. Don't you walk away from me, you chalk-faced whore. Where? What? Yeah! Aged women. Caged passions. Caged fury. Chained heat. Chained Heat, 1983. Uh, your plot synopsis is this. Young Carol Henderson ends up in prison where she must learn how to survive in an environment played by violence, murder, rape, racism, drugs, and staff corruption and brutality. That is terrible English. I just read right there. I just tell the grammar Nazis, you know. Need another comma there, guy who wrote that. But um, <laughs> just think of like a, a Pam Greer prison movie, but if it was played by a white person. And this, this, white, this white person is Linda Blair who plays uh, Carol Henderson in this movie. But um, this is directed by Paul Nicholas, who also helped write the screenplay. He, he gave us other women in prison movies as well, including The Naked Cage, which was a canon film. Um, he, he also gave us... Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba, director. <laughs> yeah, let's click on director here, see? Yeah, The Naked Cage. Uh, Julie Darling was a thing. I, I've only seen the Naked Cage out of this bunch. He only directed five things. He wrote some other things, though. Um, this has a big-ass cast, like I mentioned before. Oh, yeah. Of exploitation people that we all know and love to, you know, like to be sleazy. And I'm, I'm going to go down the list here because... Let me, let me click the big button here. IMDB. Linda Blair as Carol Henderson. Um, the, the phenomenal John Vernon... And his fuck pals in this movie, as Warden Bachman. Uh, the always beautiful Sybil Danning as Erica. Tamara Dobson, who you may know as Cleopatra Jones. Cleopatra Jones. Yeah, I knew you loved that shit right there, girl, when you saw that. <laughs> uh, Stella Stevens as Captain Taylor. Uh, Big Red, as I call her in this movie. Uh, the stone-faced great Henry Silva as Lester mm. in this movie. Oh, th there's more. Um, if you're a Wynorski fan, Monique Gabrielle shows up in this movie as Debbie. You get to see all of her in this movie. So, you get excited, people. Um, Irwin, Irwin Key shows up in this movie as Lorenzo, as, as Henry Silva's number two guy. And, and tons of other beautiful prison-bound ladies in this movie. But r right there, th th that should tell you that, you know, <laughs> that, that should give you reason to watch right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, I, I'm gonna go to Iris first, um... Let's talk about girls in the shower and stuff and in chained heat, because yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's all over this film. Let, let's go for it. Oh yeah, so th this movie has everything that you want of an exploitation film that is going to go to a women's prison: shower scenes, lesbianism, voyeurism, slavery, bondage, sadism, rape. I mean, uh, it it gives you all of it, and um. And it doesn't feel like it's stuffing it down your throat. There is actual storyline going on. And that's uh, something that I enjoy of this movie. I mean, you've got Linda Blair, uh, you know, and of course, y you love Linda Blair, right? Who doesn't love such a sweet, sweet little face? And uh, Cleopatra Jones, and she's she, she uh, is the leader of one faction, and, you know, there's all kinds of, I mean, so Linda Blair plays the new kid on the block. <laughs> Pun. Uh, and um, 
so she you know she killed somebody actually killed someone so she's in there for a while 18 months um but then you know you can see that like in every prison there's two factions and she also finds out that the third faction is the staff itself and of course they are corrupt because how much fun would one of these movies be if they were not um uh you know and inmates end up dead there's a bunch of drugs trading going on and everything and then uh one of her um friends gets beaten to death uh by the staff and then she basically organizes the women to overthrow the staff and it's a lot of fun to watch you you get a lot of stuff in there like uh vernon i like the way he died uh and our own miss stella she gets you know, her and Linda Blair, the last fight, gets thrown off, you know, falls off the building. Uh, but, you know, again, it's exactly what you want to watch in one of these movies, right? You've got the big hair, the 80s scene, you know, and prisoners in jumpsuits. And it's just a fun little romp through a prison. And it's a lot of, a lot of fun um, just watching, you know, uh, I think it's like Taylor, Captain Taylor, take advantage of some of the girls and because you know that's what she likes to do and uh, i mean who wouldn't want to hysterically or patrick jones i mean the shower scenes are wonderful so yeah i mean this the, i've seen this movie several several times and uh, <laughs> i remember the first time i watched this i think i was mm -hmm, maybe 15 and i had seen it in a movie theater and, oh, my God, I was already in love with um, Linda Blair. But um, when Cleopatra Jones comes out, oh, my little prepubescent lesbian heart that didn't even know it was a lesbian heart just jumped for joy because I was like, wow. But anyway, yeah, um, this is a great film. If you have not seen this film, this is one of the quintessential films of exploitation in prison, women's prison that you have to watch besides Birdcage, this is another one that you have to watch because this is just, it gives you everything. It even has a little gore. I mean, some of the deaths that happen, like the chick that got drowned in the fishing tank. I mean, <laughs> a little reminiscent of um, a Mike Myers movie. So yeah, it, it's really good, really great. Um, and who doesn't love 80s hair? Really, come on. So yeah, that that's basically me for this one. This is just this is just too much fun and you get to watch the mean people get theirs in the end. Yeah, yeah. Pun intended. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw bits and pieces of this over the years. I, I think I watched the edited version on the USA app all night. You know, at one point in my life, I'm almost positive I did. I'm sure it played on there. Oh, that must have been heavily edited. Oh yeah, yeah. Well it was late night, so it, it wasn't like I'm sure all the boobs in the bush were out. Cause you, you do get boobs and bush in this movie. I'm sure that was all heavily edited out. But um, yeah, that's probably the first. And talk about bush. Yeah. <laughs> but they're still in the '70s in the bush mode in this movie. Right. Yeah. yeah no landing strips on this one. <laughs> no, no, there's that. Um, Sybil Danning is always a great presence in a movie, in, in any movie, because she's always that mm. very dominant female, and everything. And this is no exception. Even when she's she's captured or, or like taken down, she's still got a lot of balls for 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 a lady, and I I always enjoy her and things. And see, the problem with Linda Blair in this movie, I mean, she tries to be a hard ass, you, you know. But she really can't. She really can't because you're surrounded by more hard ass women than you are. You know exactly. And and, and you're new to this game. These girls have been there for a while. <laughs> I mean, like in general, though, as, as an actress, I mean, I know. Maybe same year or the year after, she be she would make Savage Streets, and mm -hmm. even then, I'll, as much as I love that movie, well, except for the Linnea Quigley rape stuff, you know, ra ra raping a deaf girl is never a good thing, a rape at all. But um, it's just she doesn't seem that tough to me as far as that goes. But she she's a little more tougher than that one because she's kind of like the alpha. Well, the mm -hmm. pro the problem with this movie is that she's not really the alpha of these females. No, she she kind of like. She kind of like uh, raises them up and like you know makes them want to like get stuff done, but at the same time she's still this meek little she mulleted girl, you know. 
Could compare, right, she's just too cute. Yeah, compared <laughs> to the other ones, you know, she she she's like this little yeah. this little thing. You know, Stella Stevens, the the woman in questions, is wonderful as Captain Taylor. She's just this fucking mm. mean mean bitch who's deep down inside. They want to be the warden, so she she's out for that job, and they get that job. And because John Vernon, who's uh, he he's the warden. Uh, I I have to say, John Vernon's fuck palace. Oh right. It, 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 Harvey Weinstein has nothing on this man. Okay, I I, I kept waiting. <laughs> I kept waiting for the button here to push to lock the door and stuff. Because let, let me explain what his office. His office consists of a hot tub, you know, and cameras of in in the the. I love the old fashioned wooden light fixtures in his office. That's probably the coolest <laughs> thing to think about. It reminds me of like going to those restaurants when you were a kid, and you know the rustic you know, light fixtures are hanging down. Yeah. Well, he his favorite pastime is to fuck the inmates, you know, I'd imagine so they can get drugs uh, and uh, record them. Because the one girl he has in the thing before he meets his untimely demise, he says, you like pornography? I got tons of it in the back. Yeah, all the shit you recorded and fucking these girls. And right, exactly. <laughs> they, they might get turned off because it says it's a 1983 John Vernon just getting busy with some, some females and um, – I mean, this this room is so dirty. Even the fish tank water is dirty. Okay, it, it, it's yeah, it was. <laughs> it was kind of gross. <laughs> that tank needed to be cleaned. I, I, it's probably filled with semen and dirt. You know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Ew, Gary! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All I'm saying is, don't pull a black light inside John Vernon's office in this movie Mm-mm. because it, it's it might get ugly. It's just uh, it's not it's clean. It's gonna light up like the Fourth of July. <laughs> it's, it's not clean. It's not clean at all. You know? But yeah, the, these women, the, these these administrative women, Captain Taylor, and I forget the other one, but she kind of looks like a like a mini um, a Lieutenant Callahan Police Academy. She kind of looks like her, but she's kind of small. Yeah. But um, they're after his job basically. They they get his job in hilarious scene to where they they they, they know his mo. They know he brings women to this office to fuck, and he's in his hot tub, and they they drown him. And that girl that's in the hot tub with him, you know, with those long legs. How, how, there's there's part the part of the scene where they're trying to hold her back, and they got that girl's leg way past her head. Uh, the, this girl must be a circus performer or something because it just the body does not contort like that normally. And um, <laughs> she would have been a good lay for the warden there. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. I think so too. I, maybe <laughs> maybe he had seen her do that before. That's <laughs> I mean that, her name was Boots. <laughs> that it was Boots. That that what does. Knocking boots, if you will, you know that that was uh, mm-hmm. that, that, that was that was the selling point, you know. Uh, <laughs> God, uh, other other factors. Henry Silva um, has a lot more to do in this movie than he does in most of the, a lot of movies he's in, because he's the guy that brings the drugs in to, to the prison and uh, yeah, on the slide. He's doing some sleazy shit and brings women back to brings some of the prison back to his house for fuck parties and. So in a way, it's like what I love about this movie is who who's the sleaziest of the sleazes in this movie? Because is it Henry Silver as Lester? Is it John Vernon as the Warden? Is it is it uh, Stella Stevens as Captain Taylor? You don't know who's the sleaziest, man. Is one of the prisoners the sleaziest ones? It's almost like a battle for it, and, and I love it because it's an exploitation movie. So you can love it, you know. Uh, I mean, it is a great flick. Yeah. Uh, Tamara Dobson, uh, Cleopatra Jones herself as Duchess, she, she plays a great, you know, not giving a fuck sister in this prison where she ain't right. going to take shit from America, she ain't going to take shit from anybody, you know. Right, and that fight scene between Sybil Danning and Tamara Dobson? Yeah, just just getting it in, man, and I knew it was going to happen, you know, it's, it's good shit, though, and um, yeah, I, I love the way it ends, there, of course, there's a riot where they all, they're all going to escape, you know, eventually they're going to go back, obviously. You know, but evil is punished at this point. Of course, Lester, the, the sleaze, Henry Silva gets away because, you know, that, 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 that's it. Uh, but John Vernon dies. You know, Captain Taylor Sell Stevens gets thrown over the side in a big brawl with Linda Blair because she has the tape, the fuck tape that proves right. that, that they killed uh, the warden. And, it's, um, th- and that's the biggest thing. Is like, hey, I got this tape. If they watch it, we're all gonna go free. The fuck you are. That that's real thin there, Linda Blair. You know. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but just kill some people, okay? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't gonna, just gonna go away, okay? You know? Just, uh... <laughs> if anything, they'll give you more time, you know, for, for throwing uh, the captain yeah. over the rail, you know? Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> she can't explain herself at that point. It, um... So it has one of those 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 open ending endings, like yo, hey, they won, but did they really win though? Did they really win? Yeah, yeah. did they? Yeah. Did they? Because they're probably gonna get sent to prison. That's probably worse. <laughs> that excuse me, the big the big one wants lovers and scratches, so I, I'm doing that while I'm talking about chained heat. You know, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> that would be cash. But this is this is um. First time I watched this film in full, if you will, I, 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 and I dug it. I mean, it's, it's everything you want an exploitation film, mm-hmm. but it's made in 1983. It's not made in 1973. I, I just watched a movie, right. um, I forgot to mention someone, called Walking the Edge with um, with the great um, Robert Forster, which is a film that made in 1985, and um, it's about a woman, uh, an Asian woman, whose husband and son are, are killed by... by by um by bad guys, one played by Joe Spinell, and it it plays like a 1985 film, and that's the problem with it, is that there's not enough sleaze to make this exploitation movie when they were trying to make an exploitation movie. But this was made two years earlier, probably filmed in 80, 82 or something. Who who, care, who can care? But it's amazing what a few years can make, you know, as far as yeah. that switch from you know the the the, the leftover 70s exploitation into, like, the mid-'80s, where they really weren't doing that anymore, but they were still trying to do that a little bit. I mean, you can see you can see a little bit of that in, not down in this film at all, there's a film called Shakedown that came out a, few, a couple of years after Walking the Edge that featured Sam Elliott and, and Peter Weller, where James Glickenhouse tried to capture that, you know, buddy cop exploitation feel of the 70s. I think he pulled it off pretty well, in, in my opinion. And um, But this is filmed just in that, that right time, which makes it the, the the perfect exploitation film, even if it came out in the 80s. Um, this, you know, Reform School Girls comes up, is it, really good. Um, it, 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 there's there's tons that, that are like this, but it's made in that sweet spot. And I, I can mm-hmm. appreciate, you know, the, the love for it, and that now my love for it. It's not just a, a tits and ass movie. It, it's it's, 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 it's the, that, right, that right slice of sleaze, and uh, it's good shit. Yes, it is. Um any else to say about the film, and what do you give it? One to ten. Okay, I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'm gonna give this on the eight point five too. It's lots of fun. It's a good romp in the sleaze couch. You know, be careful where you sit, kind of the type of thing. And um, great cast. Uh, and like you said, it was at the tail end of the exploitation era. I mean, real, real tail end. Um, but still managed to capture a lot of the fun things that. We like watching in a Frank Hill movie. Yeah, good stuff though. Like, like I said, don't sit on the furniture. It's just covered with semen. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> you know. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a good time. I I'm, I I share that sentiment with the eight point five. Um, a lot of this is 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 wrong in, in the film. I mean, it's it's but evil is punished. So it kind of it kind of feels good. But but like I said, the the end of the film is like, well, what happens now? Well, you go back to jail, unless you, like, have the sequel where they start a caravan in Mexico or some shit like that, you know, which would not be as good as this movie, <laughs> to tell you the absolute truth. Yep, yep, yep. It's like, oh, we're all, uh, we're all together now, we're all gonna do things, and, like, no, you're going back to jail, I, I think, honey. It, it, uh, <laughs> that's, that's how it works, man. Um, yeah, Linda Blair take her clothes off, though, that's the thing in this movie, and, um... Mm. It's a weird time, and to where she was dating, when she dated Rick James, she took clothes yep. off. She took clothes off a lot, and um, he brought maybe he brought the freak in her, maybe the, the the super freak, if you will, you know. <laughs> uh, man, oh man, good stuff though. We'll be right back to close out the show. This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing... 
all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. That was another one of the books. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be here with, with Iris, and I, I hope she's happy with me, too. I, I could be a, oh, I could, heck yeah. I could be a handful sometimes, I know. It, it, uh, <laughs> oh my <God>. Whatever. <laughs> the semen-encrusted thing known as the <laughs> podcast, you know. Just, uh, Oh, that, yeah. that, that that Vernon seed that, that's 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 uh that's nasty <laughs> and probably salty if I had to guess you know oh my I, god can you imagine that hot tub water <laughs> ew <laughs> that's just see, semen see, soup <laughs> see that that looked pretty clean though now the fish take I had a problem with though <laughs> you know it's, it's a, oh my gosh. Oh, it was full of swimmers. It's full of swimmers, yes. <laughs> Active sea monkeys, if you will. You mm-hmm. know, man, oh man. Iris, what you got coming up, girl? Okay, so um, on that sort of weird, and you can find that at that sort of weird dot com. Um, I am going to be talking about the mysterious Brazilian lead mask. Uh, so basically, it's these two guys who were found dead uh, with uh, a lead sunglasses on, kind of. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, it's one of those weird, weird stories that I read as a kid that I was fascinated with. So I will be sharing that with people. And um, we're going to be recording uh, this Saturday, and it will be ready to bless your ear holes. On Sunday, and um, you can find it on um, any of the podcasting apps that you have. And it's, again, that's sort of weird. And you can find us on that sort of weird.com. Cool. Uh, as you hear this um, today and this Wednesday, I recorded a brand new, uh, I released a brand new Last Call of Torches, uh, our Walter Hill show, myself, Cameron Scott, and Lee Russell. Uh, we covered the, the great Walter Hill film, Johnny Handsome. If you ever seen Johnny Handsome? Uh, watch it first, and then listen to our episode uh, starring Mickey Rourke, uh, Ellen Barkin, and a very sleeveless Lance Henriksen in that movie. Just, just looking, <laughs> looking, looking ripped, man. Looking good. Um, one of my favorite... Does he wear sleeves in any movie? I don't know. He, he doesn't wear sleeves. He doesn't believe in this movie at all. He, he's got to show off those guns. You know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> he really gives it to Mickey Rourke at the end of that movie. It's spectacular. Um, yeah, that in our bonus episode, which is Mr. Sardonicus, which isn't which isn't all that great of a movie, but we go about thirty five minutes on you know the the dumpster fire that is that you know made by a great film director, but it's 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 not as good as people say it is you know because you know smile though your heart is breaking smile <laughs> if you see your dead father's corpse you know then it stays like that apparently that's how the film works but um Mister Sardonicus can be found on the Legion podcast uh, Patreon. Um, Two bucks a month, go to patreon.com slash Legion Podcast, and you can get that. And tons of early releases and some exclusive stuff from, from the Butcher Shop camp. Speaking of which, if you go to the Butcher Shop Facebook group, you can join. We'll let you in. Come give us comments on what you like, what you don't like. Um, I know it's really hard sometimes to do that, and uh, it's a thankless job, people. Put it that way. <laughs> but, uh, sometimes it feels like that, but not really. I, I enjoy what I do. Uh, this weekend, like I mentioned, the Fleas and Flicks charity auction is happening. Go to the event page. Look for the items this Saturday starting at noon, ending at Sunday uh, at 9 p.m. This is Central Time. Anywhere around the world, go in there, look at the items. Bid in the comments section. I will ship to wherever you want it to go as long as you pay for shipping. You know, so if you're in Australia, feel free to bid. If you're in fucking Spain, feel free to bid. If you're anywhere, you just uh, feel free to bid. And um, there's great stuff from great genre films in there. There's some some wrestling I got wrestling guys in there. If you feel like wrestling, 
I just posted a couple wonderful wrestling items, including an uh, Alexa Bliss Ultimate figure signed by her. And um, this was donated by this guy, Jim Swy, who I know from the wrestling groups. He also donated this massive autograph mat that has, I don't know, like 30 autographs on there, including uh, the Rock and Roll Express and Demolition are both on there. If you're an old school wrestling fan, um, it's, it's, it's pretty great. There's some old school, some new school guys on there. But um, signed NECA figure by Doug Jones. Um, I haven't put it up on, on there yet, but I'm, I'm going to put up a Tony Todd Candyman picture. Signed, Be My Victim. He rarely, rarely does inscriptions. There, there's there's Toddage in there, guys. Um, please go out there. Bid on stuff. All the proceeds go to the South Suburban Humane Society. It's a no-kill shelter. So if you um, are in the market for a dog... Go go to your local shelter, uh, adopt, don't buy when you can. These places are full of babies and, and, and older babies that, that need your love and um, they need companionship. I mean, my, my I found this dog in an alley, and now he's my landlord's dog, who, who, who was a very lonely guy. But he found he found companionship and Buddy, this, this pit bull, and they are, they are the best of friends now, okay? And it, it, it really, it really, uh... <laughs> That stuff shakes my soul a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, that's happened this weekend. Go to the event page and uh, bid away. I know that there's uh, quite a few interests in some of those items in there. So uh, duke it out with your friends. Share it out, please. Um, this is uh, something I'm passionate about, much like this show. Um, as you're listening to this, our next episode should be, unless we get sidetracked again, because that sometimes happens, um, okay. uh, should be the We're So Horny episode. <laughs> which is the, the, the Howling and Sleepwalkers. So I know Suzanne will be well enough to come on that show. So I'm, I'm sure you'll definitely hear Suzanne on that show. But um, me, and, me and Lee Russell have planned to do a Beef Out of the Canon episode. You guys are welcome to join, of course. We're going to go post-apocalyptic on this bitch and do America 3000 and the Apple. So that is our next Beef Out of the Canon show of Cinema Beef. So if you don't hear the We're So Horny episode first... You will hear that one first. Whatever comes across the pike, people. I'm playing this real loose. So, but um, tomorrow we record the brand new last call of torches, which you just got a new one, so it's all new to you. With another 48 hours, and the Patreon episode being the nice guys, which uh, has we, we, which we covered once on this show. It has um, Ryan Gosling and the great Russell Crowe in it, uh, in a Shane Black movie. So it's it's pretty great too. Um. That's all my shit. I hope we get two drink minimum, two, two drink minimum commentaries in soon. I'm getting long-winded here. Look for a new promo. I'm, I'm writing one, not as we speak, but I'm writing one currently to, to replace the one that was in the year one. So, uh, Lee Russell, stop busting my balls about this shit, please. You know, it's just, uh, I know it's old, dude. I know it sounds crappy, but you know what? I'm going to make a new one for the butcher shop, and it, it, it should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, rate and review us on Apple Music. It'll be good. I'm sorry. Rate and review us on Apple Music, all that stuff. It helps, it helps the network, it helps us. All these things. Thank you for your support. I'm, I'm sweating now from talking so much right now. But, um, <laughs> th- thank you, thank you, Iris, of course, for being here. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. No problem at all, you guys. It, it's, it's lots of fun, and I love doing this with you. All right, that is it for this one. Um, this has been your Sin Beef Podcast, where if you've got beef, 